sit back, strap in, and get ready for After Hours with TC Rastani. This is Abigail Harwich, executive producer, welcoming you to the show. And now, TC Rastani! Alrighty, welcome to the After Hours of TC Rastani, the podcast. We hear emanating from the palatial pool. Podcast Penthouse at Rastani Productions, and we here with my esteemed panel of Egbert, Egbert, Egberts, Egbert. I think I had a little too much to drink, like you did, Ricky. Oh, Pittman. I'm not gonna lie, I had a good time tonight. This is the last day of February, so I was kind of warming up for St. Patrick's Day. Well, it's kind of the special day of February, it's the leap year. Yeah, you know what they were saying? Post stuff on Facebook today because it won't come up in your memories for four years. Really? So, like, post a lot of a lot of. BS and stuff and like cut loose. So what? What kind of what kind of little drinky poo did you have before I, you came? Back? I you know it's funny you should say that. I found in the Winnie Bagel, Galen's recipes that he left behind for the Sudsy Marie and the paper cut. And what is, what is a Sudsy Marie and a paper cut? Two gin based juice oriented drinks. Wow. Served with lots of ice. Lots of ice. Was well, a f- freezing day it was. today. And I'll tell you, those cold drinks on a day like this will warm you up. Really? Okay. Yeah. So wh- 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 where did Galen leave them? Wh- where did he go? Well, Galen, you know, because of our contract negotiations, right. you know, with uh, Rastani Production Studios, I can't use him as a producer anymore. But he's fallen off the map. I, I don't hear from him. Because I heard rumblings. I didn't want to bring it up on the air. Yeah, I, know, you know, I know, I know. I know. But you that. said, you know, since you talked about, the, you know, you texted me early what you were going to talk about. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I said, can we bring up Galen? Yeah. And you said, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's just uh, I've been flying solo probably since, uh, geez, I want to say well before Christmas. Oh, really? Yeah, and his old man stopped by uh, wanting to know why he doesn't have a job. I said. I forgot well, his name. What was his name again? Uh, uh, oh. What is his face? I know, you, I know you have a few in you. I know I do. and I'm, 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 He stopped by today, and I always call him uh, Mr. Santo Padre. I can't remember his first what, name. What, is, what did it begin with? I think it was a G. Giuseppe? I want to say Giuseppe. George? No, it wouldn't be George. It was definitely an Italian name. Guido? No, it wasn't Guido. I think it might have been Giuseppe. Okay. You know, but I always call him Mr. Santo Padre. I told All him, right. I said, listen, you're going to have to ask your son. He's like, I have an auto scene of my son. Okay, see, that, see the negotiation departments here at Rastani Productions, mm-hmm. even though it's my name, yeah, yeah. I don't have anything to do with and that. And that's what I tell everybody. I said, this has nothing to do with TC and myself. It had a lot to do with Abby. Yeah. And, you know, people up in that tower. That's why we have lawyers. That's right. That handle this stuff. But see, the, the last I heard, he was into internet pranking. Internet pranking? Yeah. Like the, like the jerky boys? No, these assholes that go around and do these awful things to older people. Like they, they'll be in a department store and they'll tickle their ear with a feather. And somebody will film it. Oh, have gotcha. you seen these videos? I, I, well, well, Dice Clay kind of does something. Yeah, like that. that's who I thought of right immediately. Oh, Dice is Dice doesn't get physical with people. These people are putting hands on people. Oh, it's bad. And that's I think that's what bad. I think that's what he's in. Now, is is he going through a change of life or something? I, I don't know. Well, you know him better. I've only, I do. I've only I met I, the guy like a handful of times. I know, but like I'm, I'm flying solo on these shows now. So you're just producing it yourself. A hundred percent. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's not easy. Do you need a substitute producer? I mean, we can no, always I, get somebody from Rastani Productions. So far, so good. I'm doing good. You know, the, right. the episodes. I mean, again, the whole the show tech is a completely new format now, and uh, I'm getting a lot of positive feedback. A hundred percent. Somebody stopped me the other day and said, "You know, I was just listening to this last episode, and I was like, wait a minute, really." Surprise me. Right. And he was talking about this song I played by uh, this old blues guy, and he used the riff, the opening riff of Revolution by the Beatles. <laughs> it's good. I don't want to say the Beatles ripped it off. They just borrowed from it. All because right, they, well, they, they, the song. Everybody borrows the, from yeah, everybody. And, and they admitted it. Paul McCartney and Lennon admitted it. So. Wow. So this is, is do you have an, he hasn't like sent you a, an email or a text nothing or anything like Christmas, that? Nothing for Christmas, nothing. I texted him a couple of times, nothing. You think he went back to Italy? Well, he was born here. I know, but he, he, he has, might have. I mean, he, he 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 could be anywhere. I know he had a lot of because I I know, you know, he was using the internet down at Rastani Productions, and there were a lot of emails sent to Italy. Yeah. So I don't know if he has a you know a girlfriend, family over there. Mm, he might. You never know. I have a picture of his old man on my phone, but I left my jacket across the room. But I won't be interrupt the pain. Right. I'll show it to you. Okay. After. He's a scary looking dude. He is a scary looking dude. <laughs> I've never met the man myself. Yeah, you don't want to. He's... I mean, but you know, Galen was 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 an award winning producer. Yeah, we did all right. Yeah. Right. He came to me highly recommended. 
And it is a coincidence or whatnot that he has the name of one of your favorite apes on uh, Planet of the well, Apes. Well, yeah, his father was a huge fan of Planet I, of the I Apes. I knew too. that. I knew that. But it mm-hmm. was just—it's just strange. I haven't heard that name in a, since the Planet of the yeah, Apes. Yeah, a lot of people think it's spelled G A Y L E N, but it's G A L E N. So G A L E N. Well, hopefully, if there's anything wrong. With it. If you're out there, you know, Ricky, 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 you have anything to say to me? He's listening right now. Uh, uh, listen, Galen. All is forgiven. Just come home. Just let me know you're okay. All right. Just just check in with somebody, even if it's Abby. I like I to know. check in with Abby. <laughs> she needs a Sudsy Marie. <laughs> yeah, then you maybe get a get a paper cut on the rocks, baby. But, but we have a lot of interesting subjects we're going to be talking about tonight on the program. We've been teasing this one for a while, and of course, we have our other experts over here, Quincy Briscoe and South Boston Jeffs, the co-host and host <laughs> of Clouded Conversations. Mm, what's happening? Hanging out, and uh, yeah, you know, I was just like, it's cold out there. I mean, uh, tough on in this uh, penthouse, but. Uh, <laughs> well, I heard you were doing uh, down in Studio Z. You were down there, or if you're in Canada, Studio Z. Z. You were you were Zed's down there, dead, baby. You were down there cutting a new opening for Clouded Conversations. Yeah, yeah, that's what I like. I was, uh, experimenting with uh, my musical side and everything, trying to just uh, get a little creative. But uh, yeah, I got something nice uh, coming up for the next episode. Mm. Uh, it sounded uh, a little John Carpentry. Oh yeah, Ooh, yeah. That's a compliment. It was. Mm-hmm. Well, and, I, yeah, I was like, I, I had a song in my head, but then the the song from They Live popped into my head too. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, yeah. I'm got, so I was just rolling with it, but uh, it'll get better. Uh, like I said, it's uh, like uh, Paul Williams said, uh, Quin- uh, it's got to come from the heart, right, Quincy? That's right. You know, it's got to come from the heart. You know? Right. You know, it doesn't happen overnight, songwriting. Um, like all that hot burn you get from all that milk you drink. Yeah, how you doing on that? I uh, I, I notice, uh, you, what are you, down to like one gallon a day? Just about. Oh. <laughs> you still back on, you still with the whole milk? Yeah, <laughs> got to have the whole milk. Um, all right. And how many Mucinex boxes do you go through a week now? I don't know, a couple. A couple? No, a couple a day. What are you talking about? <laughs> a couple. That's a lot of mucinex. You're worse than a junkie down on the street, Quincy, but you're pumping mucinex in you instead of heroin. What does mucinex do? Does it make you cough more so the phlegm comes up? Or does yeah, it, it keep it from- everything up. It does, yeah. You sometimes you've heard him had his emphysema cough down here. Oh yeah, but, but it's the, actually due to milk, and he won't believe us that it's, it's actually the milk. the milk. Oh no, it's not the milk. So mucinex is what they would call in the industry an expectorate. Clears up, clears up your throat. Whatever's up. So when you need a fix, you're like, man, come on, man, I gotta spit. So, um, man. I, gotta <laughs> so I tried spit. some music, you know, and um, I got a hawkaloogie bag. Because the commercial is like a little talking ball of phlegm. He wears I like a fedora that, yeah. and a tight I'm, t-shirt. He runs around. He's like, uh, what? No coffin? <laughs> yeah. It's a little ball of phlegm. Have you ever That's, seen this? Of course I have. Yeah. So, so with the more of this you drink on top of the milk, you must be able to spit clear across uh, Gillette Stadium. Once a. Uh, you ever do that? Like really, really huck one far? What? You mean I get rid of everything? When you spit, yeah. Uh, huck a loogie. If you maybe, um, but um, I've seen him in the penthouse. You know the, the balcony we have outside. Oh there? no! Don't tell me. When he had coffin fits, he just went splat. But it's clearing up now, so I'm not as concerned anymore. So for those <laughs> of you walking, walking the so sorry for those of you walking by Rastani Productions on a nice spring summer day, that is Quincy Briscoe. You could probably save that and sell that on eBay. It's, it's people uh, are tripping over that. Though. It's, it's <laughs> worth money. It's, yeah, worth it's money. not the birds. It's not the birds. We don't have a problem yeah. with birds uh, crapping and everything, which is also good luck. But a little uh, Quincy Flim is better luck. It's just a. Yeah. Uh, Basic medicine. I'm just taking um, some stuff now. Read the drugs. Like, let me try some of this. And um, that's it. Now. Ever, what does mucinex taste like? What was that? What does mucinex taste like? There's no taste because I have the uh, c- capsules. Oh, good. Oh, it comes in pills, huh? Yeah, yeah. But I read a couple of different things, you know, and a couple of different dosages. So it's like I want something in capsules. So it's like there's no taste. Take there, these there down. And that's it. It'll clear it up within a couple of minutes. There you go. Now, getting back to something Jeff just mentioned, have you ever had a bird shit on you? Yes, I have. Really? Once. Do you know where? Where it happened or where the bird shit on me? Both. Happened in South Boston on 4th Street, and I was standing. We were a bunch of my friends talking, and it landed right here on my left my left uh, pectoral. On All my right. Ski, my brand new winter ski jacket. I was probably right. 12, 13. I was around the same age, Revere Beach. On the wall, eating clams. Sea- oh. Seagull poop. 
Oh, no! that's, that's the rough. worst ever. That's no. like getting hit with a water balloon. Right. Jesus. Or a Peter North movie. Ah, oh, uh, that. Oh. That, ropes. <laughs> You're throwing ropes. <laughs> that that sucks. Yeah, what well, it did. <laughs> <laughs> that ever happened to you, Quince, while you were out road riding your motorcycle and any birds take a dump on you? Yeah, they'll, they'll, luckily I have the uh, helmet on. You know, <laughs> yeah, well. That's why they uh, have protected helmets, got especially the shield now, because um, it does happen that you wear that protective shield, phew, but then you'll stop on somewhere and just clean it up. Right off the shield and go back to what I'm doing. You know? What about you, Jeff? Yeah, it's happened to me when I was a kid at the mm. beach. Seagull poop? Uh, yeah, basically and everything. Yeah, it'll be uh, like uh, sitting up, you know, sitting there making my little sandcastle and everything, and it'll just uh, be uh, on my head. Right. Hey! And jump right in the ocean. Mm -hmm. That's why um, it's important, you know, that whenever something like this, or put that helmet on and, and you protect it. And when the friggin' bird comes along, Splat down. At least the seagull didn't poop in the tartar sauce. Oh, yeah. That oh, been, yeah. that would have. You had to go get a new tartar sauce if that happened. Yeah, you know? yeah. Oof. Unbelievable. Oof all right. So you you seem like you're sobering up a little bit. Already. A little bit. You know, I'm just, I mean, I'm having a good time. Let's just put it that you, way. You just had some, uh, you know, cheese balls over mm. there. Yeah. <laughs> and whatnot. Those will sober you up. And now. We had a few deaths before our, since our last program. Oh, shit, yeah, I forgot, yeah. And we had, you know, two members of the wrestling community, yeah. Ole Anderson and Virgil, yep. the bodyguard for the Ted DiBiase. Yep. I was not aware of Virgil. Thank you. Uh, like, uh, uh. Yeah, it was yesterday, right? That Virgil? was yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Oh, boy. Also yesterday was Richard Lewis. That was very sad. I'm, geez, I knew there was a, another one out there. Yeah, Richard Lewis was sad. That was sad. Best friends of Larry David from yeah. Curb Your Enthusiasm. Yeah, I think he was 69, was he? No, he was 76. 76, wow. Funny guy, funny fucking 76, guy. Yeah. and he had a heart attack, but he also had Parkinson's disease. He did. He was very ill in his last couple of years. That's a shame. And, Jesus. And uh, he was a very funny man. He was, he was very funny he man. Was, uh, in, in recovery, like me, recovering yeah. alky. Yeah. Uh, like uh, but I always liked him on the Larry Sanders show or, or, or whatever. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, he, everything he did, he made me laugh. He was very fun. unique. In, in he was just depressed twenty four hours a day. Yeah, he's one of those uh, head cases. But he turned it into, and him and Larry David were best friends. They went back to like summer camp together. Yeah, yeah. They've been friends for sixty years. Yeah, that's crazy. Jeez. But yeah, that's those. Those are some sad passings there, and yeah. uh, you know, we send our condolences. But I mean, you know, Virgil, like, just uh, I mean, a, a very aggressive. Uh, As I told celebrity. you, celebrity off air. Yeah. Every time Jeff and I would go to a convention, he would try to sell one of us the replica of the million dollar championship. <laughs> and he probably belt. only had one, right? And it I mean, wasn't even the real one. Yeah, it was just a. Yeah. He said it was the real one, but it wasn't. No. And he kept going, you know, Ted DiBiase gave me this. He gave me this. Yeah, I was like, okay, right. Yeah, yeah okay. I, you know, I, I go on Reddit a lot, and there's a subreddit for wrestling. And somebody put a picture during, it was right around COVID, too. He's setting a table up in the subway in New York City. Oh, yeah. They're, 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 they do just, vert, like Virgil sightings, like yeah. Bigfoot sightings. Just like, like, like uh, instead random. Instead playing guitar, he's there yeah. selling autographs. Yeah, 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 meet Virgil right here at uh, Port <laughs> Authority bus station. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Meet, meet WWE superstar Virgil. And if you made eye contact with him, I know, I can't remember. I remember where I was. I was somewhere, one of the shows, and uh, I was with a guy who was not a wrestling fan, and he goes, who's this over there? What wrestler is that? I said, oh, that's Virgil. And he heard me say Virgil, and he would not leave me alone. You know, and, hey, man, uh, hey, man, look at this great 8x10 yeah. right here. Look at, yeah, look at this. Look at, that's look at, what he wanted to sell. Look at this bell right here. This dead DBR, this bell right here. It's all yours. I, I heard an um, autograph story today you guys will appreciate. I'm just thinking of it now. I was listening to an old episode of uh, Gilbert Gottfried's Amazing Colossal Podcast, and they were talking to a guy, and I, God, I can't remember his name, Gino, Gino Salomon. He uh, was a, as a critic, and he interviewed celebrities. He's got, a, he's got on his, he, he had people do answering machine messages for him. Burt Ward did an answering machine message for him. Uh, Adam West did one. Alan Hale Jr. did one. Skipper. Um, Skipper, yeah. And he, would, he was playing him on the show. So he talked about going to an autograph show and everything. Of course, uh, uh, Gilbert's laughing because he'll sell anything, you know, with his name on. He'll do anything for a dime. But he goes there, and uh, Charlton Heston is doing autographs, and 8 by 10s This is in the wow. 80s or something like that. $13. Oh, my God. For 13, Charlton Heston. For Charlton Heston. So he goes across the hall, and who's sitting at a table, and nobody is in her line? Ruth Buzzy from Wall uh, Laughing. Oh, my God. So he goes over, and he starts talking because he felt bad because no one was there. And he, he uh, she asked him because he said, my name is Gina Salomone. And she's like, oh, you Italian? He goes, yeah, well, so am I. So he gave her a real name, I guess, and everything. So they really bonded and all that. And, he, and then he says, you know, we had a nice conversation. He goes, I'm going to buy an 8 by 10 
So he, he picks one and he she signs it to him and everything, and she hands it to him and she says forty five dollars. <laughs> That's still actually cheap compared to these yeah, days. But Tanner. it was in the eighties. But in, and it was but Charlton Heston is signing for thirteen. Thirteen bucks, Charlton Heston. Forty five dollars for Ruth Buzzy. And he's going. I ha- what can I do? I had to pay it. Was it from the uh, Lost Saucer? No, I think he said it was the one, the one laughing lady with the hair net in the purse. The, oh, that, okay, that character okay. that she used to hit people. Right. But this guy was very interesting. <laughs> 45 bucks for Ruth Buzzy and Charlton Neston, freaking yeah. Ten Commandments, Ben Hur. Oh. I have heard the name Ruth Buzzy. On laughing. Ruth Buzzy. You know Ruth Buzzy. She was the old lady who sat on the bench and whapped people with her purse. All right, yeah. <laughs> All right. We'll, get, we'll get back to that on you. I just thought that was a funny story. It is a tell, funny story. I got to tell it to the guys, but. That's, right. that's that's actually an insane story yeah. when you think about it. Uh-huh. 45 bucks. You know, I'm surprised Ruth Buzzy hasn't gone out and done shows. Well, she's I know very, she's sick now, very, but uh, I'm yeah. saying the last 30 years. Yeah. She up until like a year ago, she was she would respond to you on Facebook. I had a couple of conversations with her. And um then all of a sudden everything just stopped. And then a member of her family posted a picture of her. She had a very severe stroke. She's one of the last connections to the Dean Martin roast era. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. She used to come out as that character. Right. Yeah. You used to whack Don Rickles yeah. or, you know, uh, Foster Brooks yeah. and all these other people. Yeah, she was a funny lady. I mean, she, she doesn't get the credit she deserves. No, she really doesn't. I mean, I for me, I always saw her on the Croft Super Show when she was one half of uh, Fi and Fum, the yep. uh, dumb, bumbling androids with Jim Neighbors. Yep. On the lost saucer. Remember, he used to do that thing when something would go wrong, and he like stuff. Yeah, yeah, he would stutter, and she had to whack him in yeah. the back. He used to like, like he used to like he all like karate chops. My friend Jimmy Kane used to do that. He used to have that memorized. He would do that whole thing <laughs> in his living room. What was the name of their pet? Dorse. The Dorse. Yeah, the Dorse. Pot dog, pot horse. I'm, I'm on it tonight. I'm very mossy. You are. Yeah, this I'm, is a, good. I'm very impressed. I'm with drink that. more often before the show. There you go. All <laughs> right. So we have a weird topic that you want to talk about, Bitman. Well, like I said, we've been tickling at this, and I kind of, you know, I want to get Jeff's input on all this. There you go. Because, uh, and, and again, I want to preface by saying I felt like these conversations will leave Quincy out sometimes. So we had a choice tonight to talk about cryptids or the cartoon series Jabberjaw. All right. Well, we, this, this, we flipped a coin. If, if, if we did. Quincy flipped a coin. And it came up cryptids. And it came up cryptids. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, do we still have that sound effect yet? Oh, yeah. Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Someone erase the labels. <laughs> no, there we go. Crickets. Well, is it this one? No, we hit that one before. It's like a game of concentration. Ah, There's my Doug Henning's so here. <laughs> Is this it? There we, there we go. go. The green. Sorry, Quincy. Oh no, I like it. I like these uh, melodies. Womp, 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 womp. <laughs> these melodies. <laughs> they're, they're awesome. These melodies. They're all good melodies. There. They're great. All right, cryptids. What is all a cryptid? Right. Well, cryptid's like a, a legendary or um, could be a mythical creature. I mean, the most when when. To layman's terms, like Jeff would probably have a better definition, but people go, "What's a cryptid?" The first thing you think of is you say, "You say Bigfoot, this mythical creature that's uh-huh, seen but not seen." But one of them that they mentioned on this uh, the, the podcast Chinwag with uh, Paul Giamatti, they talked about the melon heads. I thought that was a candy. And that's lemon heads. Oh, okay, but the melon heads, and it kind of creeped me out what they said. And the the melon head legend uh, goes from uh, Michigan to Ohio and right here to our neighbor to the south, Connecticut. Really? As close as Connecticut. Where in Connecticut? Okay. Several variations of the melon head can be found throughout southwest Connecticut, especially in southern Litchfield County, central and eastern Fairfield County, and western New Haven County. Ah, New Haven. New Haven. You, like they, that's where the Knights of Columbus are. Uh, Knights of Columbus are out, out of New Haven. So what are the, yeah. me, uh, the melon, melon heads, those uh, Martians, uh, the particular Martians that are slim but have the big heads and the dark eyes? I think that would be the tall whites. Oh, boy. So listen. All right. so, so go back. Okay. We'll start with the Michigan legend. The melon heads of Michigan are said to reside around the Felt Mansion. So I looked up the Felt Mansion. Basically, it's a mansion that was built in the 1800s, and the guy that owned it uh, invented some sort of a calculating machine, which is the precursor to the calculator as we know it today. Um, I just thought that was interesting. So the Felt Mansion. Although they have also been reportedly seen in southern forested areas of Ottawa County, according to one story... Spooky. Exactly. They were originally children with hydrocephalus. And I googled hydrocephalus, and I don't recommend you do it. Uh, excuse me, who lived at the junction 
in the junction insane asylum near felt mansion the story explains that after an enduring physical and emotional abuse they became feral and were they released them into the forest surrounding the asylum isn't that creepy actually you know what it looks like i'm looking at it here it looks like that alien from the star trek episode the cage oh yeah that one right Jeez, there you always pull these references out of thin air do you know that was a woman no. Yeah, she actually played. Jeff will understand this. You remember this episode of Star Trek? It was the very first one. It was a pilot episode. It didn't even have Captain Kirk. It had the guy who looked like uh, Pike. Pike. Jeffrey Kramer, Dom. Dom, or whatever his name was. This alien here. It's supposed to be a guy. Yes. It was the grandmother from the last Starfighter. Oh, boy. Wow. Oh, See, that, 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 that's a yeah. crazy reference there. But that is. When you said melon heads, that's what, when I looked now it up. I'm seeing it. That's yeah, what popped had, into it. Was that the, like she had to watch her soaps? She, she didn't have to watch. <laughs> she was, no, she was what's her name's grandmother, the, the good looking girl there. Oh, okay. Mags, right. Maggie, Mags, whatever her name was. Mm -hmm. Hey, Mags. Yeah. All right. <laughs> he remembers. I do. So that's Michigan. That's Michigan. So then we go over to Ohio. Okay. The Melonhead stories in Ohio are primarily associated with the Cleveland suburb of Kirtland in Lake County. According to local law, the Melonheads were originally orphans under the watch of a mysterious figure known as Dr. Crow. Dr. Crow. Crow was said to have performed unusual experiments on the children who developed large, hairless heads and malformed bodies. Some accounts claim that the children were already suffering from hydrocephalus and that Crow injected even more fluid into their brains. Ooh. So we got Michigan, then we got Ohio, and now... Over in to Connecticut, there are several primary Connecticut variations. According to one variation, the myth of the myth, Fairfield County was the location of an asylum for the criminally insane that burned down in the fall of 1960, resulting in the death of all the staff and most of the patients within 10, 20 inmates unaccounted for. See, Fairfield, that's down near Fairfield University, yeah. which isn't far from Stanford. Okay. That's a rich area. Mm -hmm. So you could be a lot of inbreeding going on. Well, that, that's another one of the things they mentioned, yeah. The legend states that the melon heads' appearance is the result of having resorted, having them resorted to cannibalism in order to survive the harsh winters of the region and to inbreeding, which in turn caused them to develop hydrocephalus. Right. Some retellings of this version substitute the asylum or prison with places of business or campgrounds and the inmates' patients with employees, staff, or campgoers. Individual variations will modify what these towns or individuals were originally from and where they ended up. What year is this? This, this is the Connecticut mentions around the 60s. Oh, the, the 1960s, yeah, yeah. not 1860s. No, people are still seeing them till this They're still day. seeing the melon heads roaming yes, around. Yes, yes. And now the area that they're known to, to appear a lot down in uh, Connecticut is known as Dracula Drive. Dracula Drive. A number of Connecticut-based legends of the melon heads have one characteristic in common. The, included, the inclusion of secluded, rustic, single lane, usually dirt road, running through the melon's head wooded territory. Many towns in Fairfield County and New Haven County have rural and forested sections, and it's not uncommon for these forests to have roads running through them. And one in particular is named, commonly referred to as Dracula Drive. None of the towns that have a melon head legend have roads designated as Dracula Drive. Depending on what version of the legend is told, one of several existing streets are mistakenly referred to or coincidentally coincide with the Dracula Drive mentioned in the melon head stories. So a lot of, uh, you know, uh, Count Chocula cereal must yeah. be going yeah, down that road. I would not be taking those roads. Yeah, exactly. that's a little, <laughs> I, I was very spooky stuff. Okay, yeah. okay, you know what? I'm game. Let's go on a well, field trip. I knew that's what we were going to, I'm telling you, but we'd have to, we'd have to go at night. Well, well you know what? When we go to Chile, Jeff, that we have to drive through that area on the way back. Jeff looks reticent. You know, all the nuts that we go down there with, you know, the melon heads would probably be afraid of them. <laughs> Reports are still coming into this day. There's, really? a, there's a website called <clears throat> Creepy Connecticut. Okay. I wonder if they even been to Ryan's Deli. <laughs> That's there's delicious. A, there's a lot of creeps in there, but... Uh, are there really? Oh, there are a lot of weirdos mm -hmm. in there, yeah. What's the specialty at Ryan's? Is that that ham? That, that, uh, no, the whole menu is outstanding. I'm not, I'm not putting Ryan's down because mm. we go there every, you know, twice a year, sometimes four times a year. Wow. Um, for me personally, it's the turkey Reuben. Oh, that sounds good. But I'm sure if yeah, if you uh, if you want to get some uh, like some pork tongue and everything, they could pull it off. It's a good tradition. It's a traditional Jewish j deli. You Have you ever tried the pork tongue? Uh, no, yeah. no you know, not you know, personally. A friend, a friend, Quest has been there a few times, mm. and he got the gefilte fish Ugh. and the white fish and the rectum and half of a Reuben. <laughs> 
have a fudgy they're, worked they're, them sandwich. Well, uh, they do do an excellent matzo ball soup. I'll give them that. They do do that. And their chili is outstanding. Oh, wow, this place sounds good. And you know what? I used to get also, this is years and years ago for the ride. I used to get a bag of bagels and just eat them raw. Oh, it was so good. Nothing like a good bagel. So this place, Ryan's Deli, exit 84. Uh, no, excuse me, exit 64 off of Route 84 in Connecticut. In what town? It's in Vernon, Connecticut. Looking at my quick list of cities here. No, don't no, this is this is right before Hartford. Okay, all right. So all right. you know, this is still in Patriot territory. All right. Well, listen, I think it's worth it. I I, I don't know. I want to go on a field trip now to find a melon I'm head. I'm telling you. And like I said, they're they're, they're still being seen. To this I'm going to call my friend who works down in Fairfield, Connecticut, yep. and say, "Listen, Doctor Tom, have you ever seen or heard of a melon head?" The roads around Lake Mohegan in Fairfield is not is one of the noted spots. No one near Mohegan Sun. Uh, the uh, no, that oh wait a minute, that's in Uncasville. Is it? Or yeah. is that is that uh, the that's other more one? near Rhode Island? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not you know where where you're talking about is literally southwestern, like not too far from. What's the, the other casino at, in Connecticut? Yeah, Foxwoods. Foxwoods. That's one I couldn't think. Of. Right. That's in Ledyard or something like that. Ledyard, Ledyard and the other is yeah. Uncasville. Uncasville. Okay. Yeah. Where this place is, where the melon heads are, is not too far from the New York State border. Mm. Maybe about. You're talking maybe 45 minutes to an hour from Manhattan. But don't you think it's funny that the melon heads are really only mentioned in Michigan, Ohio, and Connecticut? Well, they migrated, I guess. Yeah. Where do you think they started? They started in Michigan or they started in Connecticut? It's that the first sightings were, were recorded were in Michigan. Okay. You think they came down from Canada? Oh, yeah, they, yeah, I think they came through the woods. Yeah, yeah they must have traveled through the forest. Now, was there, were, were there a lot of experimentation surgeries going on in those areas? It seems like that's the, the common like insane beings. asylums. They're not aliens. Well... Or is that or, people or, nowadays aren't so sure, but you have to go back and do this research, right? Because what they were seeing nowadays, they're saying this must be aliens. But then all this interest like sparked all this research and everything, right? Is it something, that's how from, I, something from American Horror Story or something? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Kind of like those things in the movie Wrong Turn, not the remake of Wrong Turn. Like uh, they're, they're <laughs> like a whole family of Jasons. The Birchmores. Yeah, 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 kind of like that. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> but can you imagine like encountering something? Like I would that? love to encounter one Ooh, of those things, the I melon head. I think we need to go take a trip. I'm getting the douche chills just talking. That's, about it. I mean, that's a that's a decent enough drive down there. That's about three and a half hours. Oof. You know, I think we should do this. All right. Well. I think we investigate. Quincy, what do you think about this? You want to go down and meet a melon head? No, a melon head. Uh, just try to uh, help me understand this. We've just talked about it for the last twenty minutes. I don't. Know. Um, maybe I'll go and. Basically, these guys look like they have an onion for a head. And they're just out there doing whatever they do. Well, they're not friendly, it doesn't sound like. We don't know what they're doing. <laughs> they're just like Bigfoot sightings. They they're scare just, the hell out of people. They're just odd oddities that are just roaming around woods in Connecticut. And you don't know if they're harmful or not. I don't know if they have weapons or anything, but or oh, they could have like you know brain powers that make your head explode. I have no idea. That's why we need to go. <laughs> Therein lies the world of the cryptids. We don't know. We don't know. I don't think they were on Noah's Ark. Let's just put it that way. No. <laughs> you, they would befriend you in seconds. Who knows? Yeah, yeah you could See, be. I'd king. be afraid we find one, and it's, it's cute, and we all get around it, and then everything. And then, then it, uh, we look around, and then there's uh, like a bunch of the adult ones, like yeah, uh, yeah. looking over and everything. We find, we find the child and everything, the smallest child, oh. and, like ET. <laughs> yeah. And they just start walking slow to you. <laughs> they kind of, you know, the heads kind of remind you of the aliens in Mars attacks. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, yeah, those right. things were cool. Well, let me put it this way. Uh oh, they're probably uh, not too different than uh, what we talked a little bit about from the guys who come off of flying saucers. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you, they said there was different kinds of people. Uh, so these melon heads are probably not going to be too different <laughs> than the guys who come off of these the what they call um, on the dying flying objects. Maybe they're from Caplutus, like on the Brady Bunch. Yeah, maybe they're from Caplutus. So um, they said um, they out there from um, different kinds of people. So, uh, well, you know what? When we go down there, since you have more guts than anybody on this yeah, program, yeah, we'll send you down with a flashlight and some milk. Maybe, yeah. you, maybe you can be like an olive branch to the melon yeah, heads. Yeah, yeah, but I want to be like a uh, um, because you're Captain the only one, Ma Captain McCartney. I have no. Yeah, because there are no UFOs, Mr. Brady. I've investigated hundreds of sites of UFOs and a little green people, and you'd be amazed. I mean, must stack up to the station Saturday night. 
So you know what? You you you're the closest one to a melon head because you have a shaved head. <laughs> so I think that you should be the designee that goes in there, the designated human that walks down that dirt road with some milk and some chocolate. Because run Dracula Drive, you know I'm thinking Count Chocula, you know unless you want to bring blood, I don't I don't know if you have any available. <laughs> I think that I think you know they would relate to you the most. The only other person I can think of is Bull, and he's nowhere to be found. Yeah, you could be their king. <clears throat> you could be the melon head king, Quincy. Yeah, and then it's like um, and I will tell you people, it's like. Yeah, why? Well, because there are no of UFOs, everyone. Real good. Well, we're not saying they're UFOs. They could be just, they could be like different uh, they're variations. Just different, they're just different kinds of people. Exactly. Uh, they're just different kinds of people. Uh, like that, uh, that one Paul seemed pretty cool. You know, that pot smoking alien. Right, right. Yeah, uh, yeah he, he, he even uh, cured. Uh, he even cured that girl's eyesight, her stigmatism. Yeah, oh, he, well, yeah, yeah, yeah we, was, we were talking about that like an hour ago. Was that Maybe. meatballs too? No, that was meat head. Oh, okay, all right. But that did look like a melon head. That's what I'm thinking of. Me, his name oh, was yeah. his name was Ted. And he goes, "Me Ted," but everybody mm. called him Meathead. Not ah. uh, yeah, 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 that. Yeah, stop for yourself, you yeah. meathead. No, not, not, not that meathead. I know. I'm just having some fun. Oh, imagine just, if we found like a <laughs> that's female. Like this. Yeah, uh, aliens must partake in the weed and everything. That's the third. Like uh, that's the third movie that involved aliens getting high. The uh, yeah. third is uh, Cheech and Chong's uh, next movie because uh, the the aliens came down, swooped down to Cheech's weed field and everything, and uh, because they needed weed. <laughs> what they, was the, what was the, the first one? Uh, there was Paul Cheech and Chong. What was the other one? And then there's Meatballs too. Okay, he didn't. Meat Ted got high in that. I don't really remember that movie that much. He did remember. It, it just made him kind of levitate a little. He uh, he got a, he passed man. a he passed a joint with that uh, with that Italian kid who ended up with uh, in a dress at the end. Oh, the uh, the box and match. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. He uh, he passed a joint around with now, him. Now, how did you go from Bill Murray Meatballs, uh, you know, a classic great story, yeah. to Meatballs two with Meat Ted? And Pee Wee Herman driving a bus. Same way that Caddyshack was destroyed, I guess. Yeah, I know. Well, that, like uh, Richard Mulligan just couldn't keep that boat afloat. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, they, the great they, no- it's, it's all money. They just try to cash well, it. Well, they didn't make much on no, that one. But they, they, they're stupid enough to think that they could. And then Meatballs 3. What was Meatballs 3? I think that was about Sally Kellerman. She was uh, the angel of this uh, porn star, and she got sent oh, back oh, there. Oh, that was with go. Patrick Dempsey. Yeah. McDreamy? Oh. Yeah, McDreamy. And then Meatballs 4 was Corey Feldman. Yeah, you're right about that. God I don't think I yeah, yeah, I don't think I bought even bothered with that one. Because in the all right, my weird mind, my melon head is it's working going. right now. It's going. Meatballs 3, which starred um who did I say? McDreamy. What's his name? Patrick uh, Dempsey, Dempsey yeah. was supposed to be the Chris Makepeace character uh-huh. from Meatballs 1 who wanted to lose a virginity and he lost it to like a, a dead hooker, or like an angel hooker or something. <laughs> it was ridiculous. Can I be honest with you? I never knew there was a Meatballs 3. I knew there was two. I never knew there was three. And a four. I Get out of here. I just told you with Corey Feldman. I thought that he was in three. No, 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 he was in four, and he actually promoted it on the Howard Stern Show TV version. Oh, poor Corey. And he was like, uh, he's like, well, Corey, we haven't seen you in a while. This was like 1992, 93. Yeah. And he goes, we haven't seen you in a while. I was, well, I'm here promoting uh, Meatballs 4. <laughs> oh, me- Meatballs 4. Now, Bill Murray's not in this one. No, no, but we, I think we make reference to it. <laughs> <laughs> we mention him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, Someone's so, uh, watching Saturday Night Live. So what kind of nonsense are you up to now, Corey? <laughs> what, what kind of bullshit are you? <laughs> <laughs> well, there it was. Poor Meatballs Corey. 4. Remember so, his angels? Corey's angels. Oh, remember that weird video on like, oh. the Today Show? <laughs> that <laughs> was <laughs> fucking <laughs> up. Yeah, yeah, they only gave him one chance to film it, and he screwed it up and everything. And he's like, yeah, still no, 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 that's it. Enough Corey's angels for you. <laughs> Enough of your Corey See, dance. I, I like Corey Felt. I do, too. I, do too. I, I wish mean, he didn't do all this weird shit. I wish he was just like, you know, he's out there promoting Goonies and doing all the cool you know, stuff. You know how, why I like uh, him? I like his movies. I'm not saying I yeah. don't. But one night, I was on a Twitter space. Remember those? <laughs> I do. I remember I remember you telling me this. All right. And Go I ahead. was on there with our, our good friend, Nathan, who's no longer with us. He oh, passed away. Rest in peace. Uh, in October. And we were talking about Friday the 13th. The final chapter, mm-hmm. and we talked about why Gordon the dog jumped out of the window randomly. Yeah. So I said, you know what? I'm going to tweet this out to Corey Feldman. Never thinking I'd get a response. Twenty minutes later, I get you know something sent back. And he goes, "Well, I think Gordon hooked up with Benji the dog, <laughs> and they ran away and became friends." That's I was pretty like, cool. I'm actually. like, that's awesome. That is. That that's is. Re- so Corey Feldman, tip of the hat. 
to Corey. I mean, he's had some problems, obviously, in his life, yeah, drug yeah, problems, yeah, yeah. and, you know, he's been abused and whatnot. Uh, I've followed his life. I've read his book. He's got the shit end of the stick his whole yeah, life. Yeah, you got to really admit. Yeah. So, yeah. you know what? You know, all, all good things to Corey Feldman. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. absolutely. Absolutely. And he, wa he wants to bring back the Friday the 13th saga because he was young Tommy Jarvis in part four. That's right. And he wants to come back to, re you know, re do that role as an adult. Huh? So you never know. Maybe he will. Tommy, yeah, yeah, he has his own uh, version. He has his own uh, script of uh, what Tommy should be up to these days and everything. I'm, I'm very interested in seeing what Corey is. Yeah. Well, speaking of more cryptid things, yeah. <laughs> what are your what, now? The cryptids you mentioned are like like monsters or things you can't explain, unsolved mysteries, as Robert Stack would I say. I remember that. Yeah. What is your favorite all time cryptid? I, I got to go with Sasquatch. I was very fascinated with him as a young kid. You got to go with Bigfoot, yeah. huh? I remember there was a film that came out called Sasquatch. Okay. I think it was 1980. And uh, remember the bug house in Southie, Jeff? Of course. Yeah, and I saw it at the bug house. Um, it was playing. There was two movies up at a time. One the theater had Sasquatch. The other one had Oh God. <laughs> and uh, I remember seeing Sasquatch one night and Oh God the second night. And I was in watching Oh God thinking I really should have, I wanted to go see Sasquatch again. Now, was it a documentary? <laughs> it or? was. It was a documentary. You know, it's funny how when your mind is a, is, is a child and you revisit some things that don't age well, that particular flick didn't age well. I think it's available in its entirety on YouTube. And I found it and I started watching it. I remember I was like, I don't remember this. Now, I, I this vaguely, band. I may have seen this, yeah. but in my mind, it's very brown. Yeah, and it's 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 like they're introducing all these people on the expedition. And, and the film quality is the shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can hear the in your yeah, mind yeah. So, when you so watch it. Like, like, like that. It'd be like, then, it'd be like one that you, they would run in like junior high in science class. Oh, uh, 100%. And they, but they sort of dramatized a lot of it. Right. Like they had all these people that were going on the expedition, and they were kind of silly. I don't remember it being that funny. And, and But they had footage of like reenactments of like these miners or these, these uh, hunters were in a cabin one night, and the cabin was being pelted with these stones and it was all like a family of Bigfoots were just throwing it down there and then they had the recorded sound that the vo the, the I'm, I'm gonna look that up the Bigfoot noise yeah that was that's what really creeped me out because we were in Oh God watching Oh God and we could hear the Bigfoot noise and me and my buddy Steven said we should always see Sasquatch again taking nothing away from Oh God it's just you know Oh, God, was great with George Burns. Yeah, and John yeah, Denver. Yeah, John Denver, the original one, where they got the idea for the Ned Flanders character in, in the on The Simpsons because uh, his his name in that was Ed Landers. That's right. Yeah, so, like, I uh, yeah. It, Jesus, it, Jeff, you're amazing. What was his name in that? Ed Landers. Who? Oh, God? No. That, that, that was uh, John Denver's character's John name. Uh, his name was Ed Landers. And then the, the, the god, uh, the, like uh, the, the very uh, religious uh, guy on The Simpsons, yeah. he's, uh, he's directly based on him. His name is Ned Flanders. <laughs> well, let's, so uh, you don't know you're, you're until close. now. You're close. His name was Jerry Landers. Well, there you go. You're very close. And the religious guy at the end of Oh God, that was uh, Paul, Paul Sorvino. Sorvino. Yeah. He was he was doing, like a, remember he was doing uh, the difference between love and lust? He goes, uh, some people think love is what they saw in a pornographic movie. <laughs> that was lust. He was a good guy. He, he was. really was and everything. He was all over the map. Uh, let's just face it. He got typecasted. He played that role, Paulie. Nobody else could do that mm -hmm. role. So, uh, like, uh, he, so uh, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, he's a big guy and everything. And he has a beautiful singing voice. I've mm -hmm. told him that to his face and everything. I'm told, yeah, yeah, your singing voice is sublime. And he's like, oh, yeah, you must have saw me on the Hallmark Channel <laughs> on Christmas time. Thank you. And, uh, <laughs> and I was like, yeah, you're welcome. But, uh, yeah, he's just got a... Very, uh, uh, like, it's a shame uh, like uh, that he was typecast. Well, it isn't uh, because it's just such a good role, but it's just so many different diverse roles. Like, uh, the if you've ever seen the horror movie, The Stuff, it's a Joel Cohen movie uh, where uh, the world gets addictive to this ice cream kind of stuff. Jeez, I and, heard uh, of this one. And uh, like, uh, yeah, Paul Swift, like uh, at the end of the movie, they had to like, uh, because the whole world got addicted to it and the army and everything. So they, 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 at the end of the movie, a, a small group of people had to go to the general of the army and it was Paul Sorvino. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> you know, he played Worf's brother on Star Trek The Next Generation. I, that I did not know. You see, on the, in the lore of Star Trek The Next Generation, Worf was orphaned from his Klingon parents mm -hmm. and he had two Russian parents on Earth. 
And his 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 brother. Talk about a backstory. His brother was Paul Sorvino, and he was he was a, a Russian guy. I know he made one thing he made really good was that smoking hot daughter. His Mira Mira Sorvino. She's actually coming around here, and in, in, I think this month. I think yeah, the yeah, Lynn Auditorium. No, the cabin. cabin. Yeah. Oh, the cabin. Right. right. Yeah, I usually don't talk about things like this. I'm looking forward to that one, but I I don't want I, yeah like I don't talk about the celebrity until after it happens. Gotcha. That's what gotcha. Uh, that's, I, that's you know. A little, little superstition. Little, yeah, that's little, not, little I like that. jinx. Now you have a thing for yeah, Mira Sorvino. Oh, I always have. I always have since that very first movie she did for HBO was called Norma Jean and Marilyn, yeah. and uh, her and Ashley Judd, and yep. they both. Did nudes in it and everything. Yeah, a lot of nudity in that one. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Speaking of nudity, have you caught up on your shameless? The last I saw was, uh, you know, I'm so bummed because Sheila's gone. And I come to find out that's it. She's gone. She's gone. When she drove away in the RV. Yep. Yeah, spoiler, if you haven't seen fuck you, I don't care. <laughs> Sorry. But <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> like, I mean, if, if nobody, you know, listen, if, if I get spoiled right now, it's my own fault for waiting this long. So same to you if anyone's worried about it. But like she drove away and I, I, I kind of accidentally looked, what was I looking up? I was looking up why um, Jeffrey Dean Morgan, who played Negan on Walking Dead, right. played Fiona's manager at the diner in one episode. At the end of season four, he, she, this guy hires her to wait tables and he welcomes her to the diner and he's walking her in. And I was like, that's Negan, that's Jeffrey Dean Morgan. But when the season five kicks off, it's uh, Dermot Mulroney right. in that character. So I wanted to see why that was. What, did you get The Walking Dead? Um, I, it, it never really said. It, it had to have been, but there was no real clear-cut reason why he left. But he, his character was replaced by the Dermot Mulroney's character. And, it would um, be around the same timeline. Because Walking I, I, I think so. It had to have been The Walking Dead. I mean, the article was probably written, I don't know, right. in the hell. I've been to that diner. Really? It's on the back lot of, uh, of Warner Brothers. It's not in Chicago? No. Oh, Jesus. Because I, like, I went on a tour of Warner Brothers in 2019, and you know how I noticed first? The fake subway and the stairs. Wow, yeah, because Chicago's the only place with an L train. And I'm yeah. like, wait a minute. And then I turned my head and I go, it's Patsy's. Wow. Right, right I, there. I, I thought that was a real place. And the building that the train facade is in front of is from Batman Returns. They used that Holy crap. building okay, for right. Batman Returns. Because I was on the tour, I go, oh my God, there's Batman Return, there's the shameless subway, and there's the you know the, the Patsy's Pies where uh, Fiona worked. Yeah. Right there. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm loving this show more and more every episode. So uh, the Batman uh, Returns, that building where uh, the Penguin was uh, standing when he was uh, going for Pottle it, it uh, Pot. Been. Yeah, like uh, when they when they uh, threw the, started throwing the tomatoes at him. It, it could have <laughs> been because it said on it, you know, used in Batman Returns. And I was like, holy that's, shit. That's funny. So, and, uh, right, they, they were, yeah, I always thought, shame, I always thought was, Shameless was shot in Chicago. I thought everything was. And then I talked to the, the tour guide, and she was like, 90% of the show was filmed right here in this area. 90%? 90%. And they went like for like six months. Not They went there for six months, but they would coordinate what they would need for the show because mm -hmm. it was wintertime. They yeah, would yeah. go and film all those scenes. Yeah. So they had all the episodes like mapped out for like, I don't know, like a season or whatnot. So they said, this is what we need in Chicago. Go do it. I love how each season is like either beautiful summers or right. freezing cold winters. Um I don't know, they, they, and but that that ending of this last episode though, where, the, where her house blows up. Oh, the house blows up with with, the, with his annoying other daughter. Yes, I hated her. Well, did, did she live or die? We don't know. She was in. No, she got put in that um, uh, like trailer thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think she's alive. She's alive, but the, she, but the uh, yeah, she got out because the the guy that he tried to hook her up with, right. the Muslim guy, right. was drinking his uh, nectar of the gods beer in the sun, and, and as they're sitting on the street, his foot comes down. <laughs> right. so I don't know how they're going to get out of this one. They killed this poor son of a I bitch. I told you that show was raunchy. But then he, to find out he inherited $121,000 and then they slowly pieced together what he did with it. Oh yeah, it was it was like a, it was like a hangover. <laughs> he movie. donated it to all these kids with, with the fake have, legs. Was like, and he's pulling the girl's leg. He's, the girl's That's like, my leg. leg. He goes, no, it's my leg. I don't know. I love this fucking show. I, I Unbelievable. But getting back to the cryptids Sorry. and whatnot. Oh, no, no, <laughs> great segue. I love that show. I could talk about it all the time. So Bigfoot is your guy. Yeah, Sasquatch. Now, you saw must have saw the Patterson video. Yep, yeah, yeah. That was ridiculous. 
Well, and when, when you, you got to remember, like I was talking about when you're a kid and you see these right. things. I mean, the, the the quality of the footage watching on Channel 56 or Channel 4, whenever right. In Search of was on, I was like, oh my God, you look, you, you, you're seeing Bigfoot right there. How could people not believe in this? You know, when you How did Bigfoot know to turn and look at me as yeah. he's walking? He was probably pissed off. Actually, if you look close to that, it's it's female. That, that, that Patterson, the Bigfoot in the Patterson is female. It's got breasts. Is that the suit, or the, is there a woman in well, it? Listen, you call it a suit. I call it Bigfoot. Okay, all right. This way. <laughs> they call Bigfoot. What's he got to have a size of? 14? He's got a Bigfoot. 32 inches from heel to toe. He made a sound I would not want to hear more than once. So we're going to have to go see if this guy's bad or good or a different. Well, uh, you know what? <laughs> we'll, we'll drop you off somewhere in the Pacific Northwest. With some milk mm -hmm. and your new friend, the melon head, and you can go around looking for the Bigfoot. He's probably uh, going to turn out to be a decent guy. He's a big music fan, I heard. Yeah. Then, uh, you know what? Then there's nothing to worry about. If he's a music guy, then uh, we'll go out, play some uh, good music, and we'll go out. He's we'll... a music fan, it is. And uh, we're going to meet. He likes country music. Bigfoot. I'm the Howard Stern Show. You all right? All right, then we're going to go out there and meet <laughs> Bigfoot. And um, Okay. Yeah, you know, how's that sound? Sounds good to me. Sounds great. What about you, Jeff? What is your favorite cryptid? Bigfoot, Loch Ness Monster? Yeah, yeah. I, I think I prefer the uh, like uh, the, the legend of the Loch Ness Monster. Uh, I like thing. it. Our, uh, uh, our underwater ally from Scotland, <laughs> as Napoleon Dynamite would say. You, see, of, of all of them, I would say I believe in a Bigfoot. I do. Yeah. The Loch Ness Monster, I want to believe sure. because it's cl it's connected to the ocean. Yep. He could have a way to escape and whatnot. It's like that movie Lake Placid. You know about the alligator? Oh, my God. Yeah, that's a good movie. You know, and people were like, well, how did he get in here? The, the, the lake was connected to the ocean. Yeah. So the ocean's a pretty big place. Yeah. So Loch Ness, if he's, been, if, if he's true and he's surviving, you know, millions of years, you know, I'm not saying it's the same Loch Ness from a million years ago, but, right. it, but you know, the species... Yeah. There's a, there's a bunch of species of whales we never even found yeah, out that's about true. that are floating around out they there. They say it's the, or the undiscovered frontier or something like now, that. Now, do you remember back in the 80s around this area, around Melrose, uh, we had our own version of, uh, the, the, like, uh, uh, we had our own version. Of, uh, there was suppo supposedly a huge, humongous snapping turtle in the middle of El Pond, and we oh. called him Big Al. Everybody says uh, everybody claimed to have a big Al sighting. I've never seen Big Al. No. No. But have everybody, you? You, no, 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 no. But uh, but everybody uh, like uh, yeah, like uh, the like uh, the older people, the older people that hang around the uh, hang around with Al Pond and fish and everything will tell you that they they, they had a run in and it snapped as uh, <laughs> it snapped as uh, I think they're all just like stories to to frighten us kids and keep us away well, from the lake. Well, there is like there is sewer pipes that go into that place, yeah, so God knows like what like could be crawling a, in a there. Yeah. A big old snapping turtle that will come and snap your fishing rod right in half. That was look at those snappers. Now, <laughs> as you were describing Big Al, I, I got a thought. Gamera? I'm talking about... <laughs> no. Like, human cryptoid, cryptids. Oh, we are, I know a bunch of them. Right. <laughs> now, I'm thinking, like, now, growing up in Southie, now, you, I don't know, Jeff, do you remember Smelly Mary? Do you remember? I, I, I've heard of her. Okay. I mean, so there was Smelly Mary. Yeah. There was uh, Dirty Louie. Dirty Louie, Bobby uh, Quarters. By, Bobby Shakehead, Bobby Quarters, Bobby No-No, Rocky the Drunk. Uh, Southie man, who was, I think his name was Dan Hurley, he used to get drunk and he'd walk, he'd march through the streets of Southie and he'd just do these dances and all the kids would follow him because he was, he was just ripped out of his mind. But he was all, you'd see him sober, he wouldn't remember why kids were following him. All right. But when he was drunk, he loved everybody. He was a happy drunk. He wasn't abusive or anything. Smelly oh, Mary. Yeah, what, I, what I, come I, up I, with I these remember names? seeing him and everything. He would dance down yeah. the street and everything and he'd go, Southie, I love you. He was like, what did like come up Durante. with these names? Like, I don't know, Quincy. Where yeah. do you come up with these names? But this Smelly guy, Smelly Mary. And they would talk about the dark clouds that were coming in. <laughs> the dark clouds, they'd be coming in and taking all of our houses. Yeah, he it was very racially can, charged. But yeah, he, uh, he would uh, like uh, he he would do magical things with the empty can. He could kick it like uh, like a hat. Yeah, sack he would like and do like a hat routine. He was always very entertaining. Or, you know, and the, then he would whistle. This guy needs to be on community auditions. I'm telling you, opinion. you knew when he was coming. Everyone, all the kids would go Southie man. That's what we called him. Um, was it? Did he have? Did he have a green on? Sometimes, you know, right. but he was he was Dan Hurley. And, but you'd see him when he was sober, and he kind of knew that uh, people must have told him, like, you know, this is what you like when you're drunk, and he probably didn't believe him. But then, like, kids are like, Southie man. He's like, uh, okay, let uh, me uh, What was his and, real name? Dan Hurley. <laughs> yeah, 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 just leave me alone. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Clark Kent. I'm not Superman. <laughs> But, like, you have Mario. Would Mario be, like, a cryptid, do you think? Mario is, 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 could be a cryptid. But there yeah. was a guy next door here at Rastani Productions, the Dunkin' Donuts. We used to call Axe Head. 
Oh, see, okay, this All is right. good. Axe Head kind of looked like he was maybe like Jason from Friday the 13th. Oof. It looked like someone cut his face, just his face, off with an axe yeah. and tried to put it on, and it didn't oh. go right back in, right? Yeah, I'm getting sick listening to this. And, and we used, he used to have a limp. He used to walk like this, right? Oh, <laughs> God. Then I, you see my fingers how I'm doing this? He walked like this, and he used to go up to him and go, we, people used to go, they didn't call him Axe Head to his face. Right. Because you, you could have had an axe, and you know you could have been one of them yourself. Yeah. And he go, hey, man, what time is it? Do you know what time it is? No. Oh. <laughs> so he would spend hours at that Dunkin' Donuts. All right? That God guy, he, I, I would say he was a cryptid. Yeah. He, was, he was definitely out there. I think every neighborhood has their humanoid cryptids. And then there was another guy. <laughs> this poor... This guy had the worst scoliosis I've ever seen. Oh. And one time, this is no lie, I, I, it, bringing this up, I'm going to laugh because it made me laugh even then. It involves our good friend, Cousin Leo. All right? <laughs> you, you know his attitude, right? I, I do. <laughs> so I'm already left. We were down here one night in Rastani Productions in the editing facility. <laughs> All right, and we were putting the show together, and he comes walking in, and he, go, and he just goes, hey, guys, hey, very quiet. <laughs> and it's, you know, you're losing, Leo, when he walks in, hey, he's oh, yeah. always, you know, very loud and whatnot. <laughs> he comes in, he sits down, he goes, he goes, how you doing? I'm like, okay, what's wrong? I just saw a guy walking with no head. <laughs> <laughs> I go, What? He goes, I was coming down I was, I was coming down the street, right? We're going very slow, right? I can see his face. And, and it was at night. It was, it was at night. And I just saw this body <laughs> with no head. Now, he didn't know about this guy. Oh, yeah, okay. But he this saw him guy, the, yeah, at the wrong angle and everything. He did. He saw a shadow. But his go-to was it's a headless body. Right. And, <laughs> and I go, I, I, I kid along, I go, really? Was it like Ichabod Crane? <laughs> He's like, he goes, don't kid about this, all right? Because <laughs> this is going to bother me forever. <coughs> and then I said, I go, Leo, oh. <clears throat> that was such, I'm not going to mention the guy's name. Yeah, yeah. That's such and such. He has like the worst scoliosis. His head is on his side, oh. right? And he's like, he's like, you're not pulling my leg, right? I really saw a guy with no head. Yeah. I go, well, technically, yeah, you did. But it's on the side. Is he still around? No, cousin Leo? No. <laughs> oh, the the, uh, the, the guy with no head? No, he's gone. Is he? Because I, I, I think yeah, I've seen I heard he was uh, quite, is, quite the piano pro- player. He I was heard. a piano player. That's the crazy part about oh, it. Isn't that awful? He was a very talented guy. He was, he was just born that way. You know, his whole world was upside he, down. Was he around like within the last five years? Well, or? within the last eight, I would say. Okay, because I do remember seeing him. But I'll weeks. never forget that night. Leo oh, just walks geez. in. That's too funny. And he's wicked quiet. If you know Cousin Leo, if you don't know him, he's loud and funny and whatnot. He just came in and he was pale. You see that face. And he's, and he's like, he's like, and he had his hat and he goes, I just thought a body with no head. <laughs> <laughs> it was coming down the street. <laughs> Yeah, not it wasn't lying on the street. It was walking. It was walking on the street. I go, did you stop and take you know to get a selfie? <laughs> this isn't funny, okay? <laughs> don't joke about this. Don't joke about these things. I go. I know what I saw. And, and then and then I told him about it, and uh, he was like, I I still don't believe that. I, I I don't believe that. And he goes like, I go, well, you better not walk in the woods anymore. Don't do that to me, because I like walking oh. in the woods. I'm going to see some like minotaur running oh. around. <laughs> <laughs> Running around. I was like, okay, all right, fine, big tough guy. Oh. The, the guy had no head. God, why are you so cruel? Oh, <laughs> my God, that was funny. Just, just, you, just to see his face. I, I can only imagine. Well, my first encounter with that, that, that guy was when I was a lot, yeah, when I was like uh, 13 or 14. And uh, when I was a little kid and everything, I, and I, I said that I saw that, everybody thought I was an, an insane little kid. <laughs> but uh, you know where I f- spotted him was coming down the stairs of that big brown mansion across the street on Vinton Street. And uh, he, he was coming down the stairs in an odd hour. But they. Uh, That's scary right because there. Uh, the the priests who lived there let him come in there to, to, to play to, uh, to play the organ, <laughs> and then, uh, he has to come there at odd hours. So he's Playing not seen. The organ, but right. as a little kid, imagine that, yeah. the, like uh, this headless guy emerging from that mansion, don't, don't coming me down these woundy gliding lighties. down the stairs. Yeah, coming down the stairs. I bid you welcome. Whoa. <laughs> I, I get shivers thinking yeah. about it. children of the night. Now to get a visual, of what cousin Leo looks like. He looks like Jim the Anvil Nighthide. <laughs> yeah. All yeah. right. That just imagine. Jim the Anvil Knight going, that isn't funny. I just saw a headless guy. With a heart of gold. 
Unbelievable. We got to get him back on here to get his re- recollection I, I, of that I, story. Seriously, I mean, I wish he would come down here for one of these. Because be I, 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 I had to hold back my laughter that night because he was, he's, Pale as a ghost. Yeah, yeah. We gotta, we gotta get that. Uh, I want to interview him. I want to <laughs> interview. Yeah, we gotta get him on, get him on the down, show. Man. And we're get him like, down. what the hell? What the hell? So what? Uh, like, is that what you're gonna ask the guy? You gonna <laughs> bring him down here? And you're like, so what the hell is yeah. up with you? What's your what, problem? What's your problem? <laughs> like, how? Sit up how? straight and get a life. <laughs> Do you need a telephone or something? <laughs> That'd be something he would say. <laughs> Remember the time he screwed up Jerry Pearl's wig? He thought when, when Sabrina got kidnapped. Oh, the cat, yeah. He goes, that, my, that's my cat, Sabrina. And he went, oops. Oops. <laughs> and he was like stel- He was like tiptoeing around. Oh, and yeah. He, Very light on his feet he, for he, a man he, of his yes, carriage, yes. I will say. He was a little stealth bomber there that yeah. night. I'll give up my mic spot to you if you're listening, Leo. You could sit here. Oh. Just come on down, will you? We'll be in tears because he takes things a lot very serious. He does. And he that night for that dude, yeah. he uh, he literally thought he saw a headless horseman oh, walking around. Gosh. Unbelievable, Quincy. What would you have done if you saw a guy with no head walking around? I don't know. I'd say, hey, yeah, uh, there's a guy with no head, uh, <laughs> but no blood gushing out of his neck. Let's hope uh, not. Um, he had no he, head. How could he hear anything? I know. I would probably say, be a first. They're this Saint Halloween. This is the real thing. We talked about melon heads and we talked about no heads. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know I would probably have a strange reaction that's like, but how can he see where he's going? <laughs> Good point. Um, I doubt we're going to see a headless person, but but the way things are going right now, hey. <laughs> yeah, you, you never know what you're going to see. You never know what you're going to see. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, Quincy, it's about that time. Wrap up the show for us, buddy. Well, thank you for watching this very interesting show. Uh, we hope to see you again soon. And remember, drive home carefully because we want you back in one piece. But remember, we, we never, never close. close.